Hey guys, Nicole Spinoza with The Short Sale Queen, and today we are going to be talking about prospecting. And I have my friend, I was going to say special friend. What do I call you? Okay. My, my good friend, friend colleague, colleague, badass. You should be saying this about me and not me myself. <laughs> Hey guys, Nicole Spinoza with The Short Sale Queen, and today we're going to talk to you guys about prospecting. And I am so excited to have my good friend, colleague, and complete badass with me today because this is something that she is so good at. She can break this down for real estate agents, especially if you're looking for how to create more business and really just dive into Elizabeth's story on you know what she did and how she got here. This is going to be extra crucial right now with the market we're in with COVID Absolutely. to make sure that you're in control of your business and that you're constantly bringing in new business and not just dependent on your sphere. Um, or any sort of referrals, keep that there. But then this is how you make sure that you stay in control and that the market doesn't control you. So, absolutely. So let's first start with, I mean, for the people that don't know you, Elizabeth Austin with the Good Home Team, um, powered by EXP Realty. Yep. Uh, we are part of the, the same uh, network. Um, that's actually how I found out about it. This is the person that got me over. Can you start with your background, like how you got into the business? And yep. so that way they understand, you know. So you I've been in the business for five years now. And got in actually because I moved so much in my life and honestly we had shitty real estate agents. Like I feel like every single time we yeah. moved and I always inserted myself in the process. So I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. So I got in in 2015 and got my license and started off as an individual agent. I got started at my brokerage at that time. And then I was like, like, where's the business? What's happening? Right. Um, so I was completely lost focusing on all the unimportant things. And I started to realize that prospecting was something that I was going to do after a mastermind at my last office, that all of these agents were spending when building their business, at least four hours a day, just prospecting for new business, not running appointments, not showing homes, not doing marketing or social media yeah. on the phones or door knocking, whatever their prospecting looks like at that time. And there's so many different ways that you can prospect for business that can fit your style. Um, pretty quickly after starting that, there was an opportunity for a team that I'm now still a part of almost, so four and a half years on this team. And it's a long time to be on the team. Very long time to be on the team. And the structure of our team's changed so much, but what's important to know is uh, the team, the Good Home team, is run by Nick Good. And at that time, they had an agent on the team, a buyer's agent, and that's all we were allowed to do was work with buyers. Mm -hmm. And the structure at that time was he was out there getting sellers and then feeding those sellers to this one buyer's agent um, when they wanted to buy. They sat me in front of a computer, there was absolutely no training, and they're like, here's your spot and we'll put leads in your account. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I kept it simple. And that's the first advice I have with prospecting, keep it simple. I knew that there were leads in there. I needed to connect with them. I needed to convince them to meet with me, hire me, and then I needed to find them a home. I would sit there and I would make phone calls. First year, I ended up exceeding their four-year agent in production in units sold. Um, and it was all strictly through prospecting over the phone. When you think of being a new agent, you think, who do I know, right? When you get trained, like for me, it was like, I don't know anybody. So I was forced to do cold leads too. Well, I, I had a few people here. However, they had all just purchased real estate in the past yeah. three years. And I was 23, 24. Right. So first of all, I'm new to the area. Like you're so back young. here. Yeah. I was so young. My sphere is actually in another state. The sphere that I do have here, which is just a handful of family members, they all just bought. So I was right. SOL. That's a great part of your story because you didn't have a choice. Right. Like that, that was the same with me. I came here from Florida, so I actually didn't know a soul. Right. And people are like, well, I don't know anybody. I'm like, that's not really a reason because it, it doesn't matter. Find the right? business. So I she just jumped, anywhere. You just jumped on the phones and you were like, I, and I love how you thought it was so simple for you. Cause most people are like, Hey, I got to say this. I've got to know the perfect script. I didn't know yeah. to overcomplicate it yet. Right. And I've had to go back to our roots. And when I was re leading the team and running the team, which I did for two and a half, three years, I would have to remind them of that because it's so easy. We chase complexity. We say it all the time. So it's really yeah. easy. But that is the thing to remember. I started the structure. I started just randomly calling. I didn't have a ton of structure the first three months. I was just come in every day, work for a few hours, connect with leads, set appointments. And I started setting stuff within my first like week. 
but I wasn't disciplined with it yet. However, I still had two closings within my first eight weeks on the team. Okay, so that's really awesome because most agents, it takes like six months to a year just to get their first deal. And then some, like, it's only a couple of deals a year. So right. that's fantastic because that, you. you were clearly doing something right. So uh, can you tell us, like, what did your schedule look like? Because yeah. you, in order to do that, you had to be really disciplined. And well, and it was an evolution over that first year. So yeah. the first three months was just coming into the office, getting into the system. I was so overwhelmed not having training, not knowing how to use a system that I would follow up with a lead once. And I'm like, where does it go? How do I know when to follow up with it again? I was just coming in daily, committing a few hours. I, I think I would actually at least sit in the office. I was pretty much there by nine, nine thirty every day. And then I would hop on the phones and then no way was I leaving before three at least. Okay. So a decent amount of time and we didn't have a dialer. So I'm hand dialing all of these. You guys use dialers now? Yes and no. We did for a long time and I've backed off of a dialer again. So when me and Nick were doing that video, we were doing it one by one and I was like, no, I would never do this. Yeah. When I watched that video, I was thinking, no, y'all should definitely have a dialer. I was really proud. Like you said, I had those two closings literally like the week before Christmas and then my competitive nature hit. And I saw that on January, I had one closing set and the other agent who I was out, or I ended up outperforming that year. Um, because of when I joined the time frame and everything, she had six and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I mean, good for you. I don't need you to have less for me to have more, but I'm competitive and I want more. Right, I need so to step up. that's when I how learned. Long, how long were you licensed at this point? So this is technically December. I got licensed in April, but I joined the team in October. Okay, so since October. From, from first of October, yeah. Okay, and so question, the first two, um, and there's a reason why I'm asking this, but the two closings, how old do you think those leads were? Well, I don't even know. Like years? No, 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 they weren't that old. Um, one of them, funny enough, came into our system and I got them right before they ended up listing. So they actually ended up listing with Nick and I helped them buy, but it wasn't the same situation of like him handing it off. Yeah. I got a hold of them, converted them, and then at that point we had to send the listings over. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, the other, I can't even remember. I couldn't tell you. I know who they are. I know who the yeah. clients are, but I but couldn't tell you. Like it like it had been there for right. a while. I probably didn't even know how to look in the system yeah. to tell you how long it had been. So the reason why I asked that is because you had said originally that they, they just dumped all of those leads. And a lot of times I think the biggest misconception with leads in general is like, hey, what's the biggest thing? That people don't follow up, right? Right. So, when they first get the lead, it's hot, they're excited. And yep. then after the second, or maybe if for some agents, probably a very small percentage, they might do it three times. And maybe. then they're like, on to the next, right? We'll get and into so, strategies with that too, because yeah, you're right. I definitely want to ask you as far as like your consistency, but I think that's a really great point because most people think like, oh, these aren't good leads. Like I have agents on my team that, you know, throughout the years that have been like, these are really shitty leads and so, there really are no bad leads. It's your follow-up and your consistency. And for you, 100%. You, you came in. I didn't know, you know better. better. Yes. Exactly. You didn't know any better. And this is a great, um, like nugget for agents that are listening. Like she just came in and because she didn't know any better, she just did the work and yes. you called and you followed up and she was able to convert. So there really is no excuses. Well, and what I can that. tell you from this point with the level of experience that I have, from the time a lead, specifically like a buyer lead, comes into your database, yeah. it is very typically a 13 month process before that lead actually buys. So when months. you're getting something that's quote unquote old, it's not an issue. Plus we see so many people these days who need credit repair, who need to save money. Yeah. I am helping people that I initially first contacted in 2015 or 2016. It, like I do not stop my follow up game based off your situation just determines how frequently I follow up. And I love your perspective because she, so one of the benefits of being in the network that we are with EXP is that we have so many great resources. Like we have so many people that are doing unique things because what Elizabeth does is completely opposite from what I do, right. right? I'm a relationship referral business and she is out there like prospecting, going directly to the consumer. So what I love about our network is just the willingness for people to say, what do you need? Like, how can I help you grow yeah. your business? And that's, we have this collaboration. Here's my strength. Community. Here's my strategy. Yeah. Take it. And we're so transparent with that. Of yeah. what we're so she do. was talking to my team and kind of like kicking them in the ass. Like, uh, <laughs> no, let's break down. She like put them on the spot. I don't think they were expecting that where oh, they were like, play. Hey, so no, tell me exactly what you said to them, you know? And so what I loved about her perspective was every single objection that she told them, it was okay. Well, 
And what? Yep, no problem. She wouldn't let him get off the phone. And that was the point is that the way Elizabeth views, views like objections, like you said, 2015, 2016, it's not a problem for you. And most people would have been like, that lead sucks. It's so old. So that's all your perspective. Like everything also, is your how perspective people, how you look at it. And you guys may not experience this as much with your type of business, but yeah. we do work with more traditional clients. And yeah. how many people do I know that purchased in 2015 or 2016 are ready to sell and buy again or already have? Yeah. Like we have so many people who stayed in a home two years, three years. So, and especially if that's in our database and you're just now coming into it because that agent didn't hold on to it, mm -hmm. it is your opportunity to go get it. I mean, that's the kind of a thing of being a team. Like you should stay on your clients. And if you don't, and someone else is going to go contact them and get them. So once again, don't see that date and just assume if they bought like, oh, well, they already bought five years ago. Yeah. The average time someone stays in their home is five to seven years right now. Yeah. So, so fast forward, you are obviously super competitive super and so competitive. you're going into it and you're a bigger yes. game. So tell me what, what did your, when you start being consistent and you start getting consistent closings, yeah. because I don't think I've ever heard you not have a million closings a month, right? Um, what, what, what did that look like for you? So it was January was when it, like it, the light bulb went off in my head and I was yeah. like, mm -mm, I'm not going to be last place. I'm not going to be second place. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> By the way, since I stepped onto the team, I have been the top producer every year since. I just want to say, competitive drives. Just a little bit. Um, little bit. Okay, so what happened though is, once again, there still wasn't a structure with the team, so I put a structure on myself. So I remember sitting here being like, I got to talk to more people. How am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. I started looking into dialers myself, and I was like, I got to get a dialer. Luckily, one of my team owners, Austin, overheard me, and he was like, how much does this cost? And I was like, I don't know, like this much. And he was like, we'll totally get that for you. And my mind was also blown there. I was like, the team will pay for this. <laughs> so like, there's a whole other video on teams that we can do for you, but yeah. that helped. And we had someone start putting these lists into the dialer so that I could truly hit that many more people every single day. Right. So at that point, then what my structure looked like is I would wake up around 6:45 every day, hop in the shower. And every single day for almost that first year from seven to nine while doing my hair and makeup, I had my computer open on my vanity. I had my phone on speakerphone and I had our mojo dialer going and I'm talking to people. Wow. And then I would drive to the office because I, I wanted to avoid traffic and there was no set structure. So yeah. then at nine to nine thirty, I would drive to the office, get there. I would continue to prospect until at least noon or one. And that consistency got me so busy that within three months of that, I had to hire a showing agent to start helping me. And so with that being said, before that though, my days were seven to 11 at night, cause this is the height of the market. So I'm doing that. Then I'm showing multiple clients every day, starting at one or two. Then I'm coming home and I'm writing multiple offers from multiple clients. And at that point it wasn't like, Oh my gosh, I'll do it tomorrow. The home will still be there. No, no, no. They're go selling an hour. So Wait, I was 2015, 2016 technically at this yeah. point. So they're selling in hours. They're going mm -hmm. off the market. So I had to walk all of my clients through the offer, submit it, like wait for them to review and sign it. So sometimes I'm staying up till 11 or midnight waiting for their signature. Yeah. Cause I'm like the deadline 7am tomorrow. You yeah. have to get this back to me or like, we're not getting the offer in. Like that's how quickly stuff was selling. So that was my days. Eventually from that model, I was making, by the way, I, once again, just to be the best. And I like to throw out big, crazy goals. We would have weekly team meetings. And they'd say, how many people are you going to call? Well, there are people in the past where used to being like, oh, I'm going to talk to 50 people this week. It's a freaking joke, by the way. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to do 1,500 to 2,000. So I made 1,500 to 2,000 calls every single week. And I hit it. 1,500 calls. That's dials. Insane. That's not always talking, of course, to people. But 1,500 to 2,000 dials every week. And I would say I hit it 90 to 95% of the time. And my and favorite. Out of that, how many clients were you getting? I, I don't know. I can tell you my first year I, um, sold 7.7 .7 million worth of real estate and my average sales price was $250,000. I think it was 33 homes that first year. But remember once again, the rev up time, right. um, what was building your pipeline is building so the pipeline. one thing that I think is really important to point out, which didn't start building by the way, sorry yeah. to cut you off, but it didn't start building 
didn't start those activities until mid January, early February. Right. So I actually did almost all of that in the last seven months of the year. It takes a while to not only, like you said, it takes a while to not only build your pipeline, but the consistency comes because everything we do today is months out. Yes. So, I mean, that's incredible because that means it took you at least two to three months to, to build that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So it wasn't a full year. Um, but one thing that really uh, stood out with your story was that how clear you were with your schedule. Right. So most agents lack the ability to give themselves structure because yeah. when we're employees, it's so easy, right? Like we show up, we're told exactly what to do. Getting paid for my time. Right. And, yeah. and we're very clear because it's right there. But the number one thing that agents suffer or, or they, they are lack or they suck at <laughs> better word, yeah. right? I was like trying to be nice about it. But what we suck at as, as entrepreneurs and individuals is that we have to monetize our time. And they're really, and you know, the benefits for you, for the team was that they said like, this is what we're supposed to do, but you took it to a whole other level because she was clear of like, okay, this is what's going to generate income. So I'm going to go hard at it. I mean, Absolutely. you obviously took it to a whole level, wake you up six in the morning till 11, 12 o'clock at night. I completely but that's impacted. But able to dominate your first year. I mean, yeah. if, if you're a new agent and you're watching this, like this is not normal. Well, well here's the thing possible. that I want to say. There's always the work harder, work smarter. I right. definitely think the first year you're in anything, if not the first two, it has to be work harder. Oh, 100%. Eventually, you, you can transition place. into work harder and work smarter. For you, like you say, I, you know, obviously in your videos and when you speak and things like that, like every single day you have to, to prospect and I think and I tell this to my agents all the time I'm like guys the only way that you can consistently stay employed mm -hmm. because if you don't have closings you're not employed is every single day you're blocking out that time because when you have 10 to 15 closings a month or have a bunch of clients and you stop prospecting in a couple months you're gonna be that agent that's like why, why am I not yep because you have because to what figure you out do before in the months before you have got to figure out how to do that as you do get business and yes. how to keep protecting that time and here's something else that doesn't get said once again I said I worked harder than that I do now uh maybe not right now at this direct moment but then I'm now learning how to work smarter and mm -hmm. harder as you grow you don't get to stop whatever is the most fundamental that may shift that may change but whatever that ends up becoming for you in your business yep. no matter how big or successful you get like you still need to do that every single day as well as you're going to skill up so what i did spend four to six hours doing in the in the, my first year or two maybe now i spend one to two hours doing right. and i can achieve those same results now if i want more or to exceed that then Besides, of course, adding people, adding systems, adding leverage, however that looks like, um, you know, I can do that and continue to scale my business that way. And it's not always the same time because I'm better. I'm more skilled. I have more experience. My conversion's higher. So now it's no longer as well as now I'm, I've added in so many other forms of business and there's the repeat and referral and stuff. But that is how I built my sphere based business and my repeat and referral and my past clients was from taking those initial steps. And now it's a combo of the two. It's not one or the other. I focus on both now. So I think what's, you know, Elizabeth, I, she's incredible. I mean, she is one of the hardest working people I know. Um, I tried referring my sister to her because that's how much I trust her. Now my sister would not use her because she's stubborn, but that's not the point. The point is that I would refer family to her um, because the one thing that I admire so much about her specifically is not only your grit, not only your willingness to do whatever it takes, but the amount of time and effort you put into your craft that what makes you so good on the phones. Like I've heard her, I've been in the car with her where she's like, okay guys, let's break this down and the yeah. way you explain things. But what a lot of people don't see when you go down to the fundamentals is what you just said, how much time you put into it. To so people it. automatically want to fast forward to, hey, I want to do 50 closings a year, yeah. right? But what they don't understand is like in the beginning, you kept your head down you put in the work and that was the same like when I talk about how like the first couple years, I didn't even talk about short sales. The first couple years, I was trying to figure out my process and right. put my systems into place. And so what some agents make the mistake of doing is hopping on social media and saying, hey, I figured this out, this, this, and this, when they haven't really had the time, you know, to put in the work, right? You have to be able to do that and what makes you an expert and what makes you so good at your job is that you spent all of that time and you were so clear of like, this is how much time I need to do. And now it's five-year-old leads. She's like, no problem. Let's, let's figure this out. Well, that's, you know? I'm happy you said that because it can actually get as simple. Once again, kind of right. the theme 
can get as simple as being a simple mathematical calculation of this many times or this many contacts. If I want to sell this many homes or if I want to make this much money based off our average sales price, like work backwards from the end goal. But that comes down to, I need to talk to this many people every single day yeah. and look at the things that you can control. We talk about this all the time in our team, leading versus lagging indicators. I can't control who picks up the phone, but I can control how long I stay on the phone until I talk to X amount of people. Repeat that again, leading versus lagging. Leading versus lagging indicators. So, so a lot of people that. may, so it's metrics that you can use um, when figuring out what you need to do for your business. So a leading indicator, things that you can control essentially versus things that you can't control. So right. lagging, I can't control how many people pick up the phone, but leading, I can control how many dials and attempts I make in order to get to the number of conversations that I know I need to hit today in order to stay on track for my weekly, monthly, annual goal. What it really comes down to is that what you said, that you felt like you were more comfortable, this was your skill set, and you went 100% in on that. 100%. You were trying to replicate what most agents do where they're like, I'm gonna do open house, and then I'm gonna tell my sphere, and then I'm gonna do cold calling, and then I'm gonna do um, you know, purchasing leads. And no, you were so hyper-focused and if you guys notice, there's a theme here, right? Where you stick to one thing and you go all in. Well, and, and no one thing is technically more successful than the other. It is what you're gonna stick to. It is yep. what you're naturally, and this is like no two teams are both alike. So if you are not good on the, and you don't, no one starts off typically like great on the phone. It's like it can, yeah. definitely can be learned, but if you're not gonna do it, but you are gonna go door knock. I am not gonna door knock. I am not going to do open houses yeah. and I mean, I really would if I had to, of course, that's just my natural nature, but it's not the best use of my time. It's not the best use of my team's times. And I'm going to really limit my results, and my outcomes. So figure out, test a few of them, but then figure out what's best for you and then go all in on that. I learned very quickly. So it was actually a, a requirement on my team that we did two open houses a month. And I said, screw that. I'm not great at open houses. I will commit that same two hours to an open house to prospecting on the weekends, which is Actually, how I think I got started prospecting on the weekends, I don't know that it was a natural thought of like, I do just have to do this every day. Right. Um, and and to replace well, it. and then yeah. I learned what a great pickup rate there was on the weekend. So Sundays in particular became my favorite days. I would try and block it from showing some. Sometimes I would spend five hours on the phone on Sunday, starting right. after 12 noon. Um, and I would go to six, seven, eight o'clock at night. What is the best time to prospect? What did you see in like the best, like what are you doing right now that you're like, these are, like you said, Sunday. Like that people are picking up. So Sunday is one of my like little hidden secrets, which none of this is actually a secret. So I love Sundays because people are home. Like let's let's remove COVID from this first situation. Uh, Everybody's picking up in COVID, but this, <laughs> this will be on YouTube forever. So this yes, is exactly. So Sundays are great. People are home. They're with their families. You are always going to inconvenience someone. Just know that. So get over that fear in your head. So I do politely try and wait until at least 12 before I get started to think about church or anything, uh, family gatherings and then lunch. And then I will go and I will call until five or six. My pickup rate, I tell you, is never higher than a Sunday. Now, I still obviously do it the rest of the week though. So Monday through Friday, we are on the phones at eight. Eight to nine is really one of the best pickup rates. You also have to think about when you're trying to reach people and what you want out of that. So first of all, it's very easy in real estate. To, uh, everything gets thrown at you. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you're no longer lead generating because you didn't block that time and you're putting out fires for your deals or you're scheduling showings or you're ready, getting ready to run appointments if you've been doing your prospecting. Um, so all of a sudden now you're no longer prospecting. So if you can do it first thing in the morning, at least you can guarantee that one hour, that two hours, that four. And during COVID, by the way, I would be doubling down on my prospecting and spending this time on it right now and build that, you know, that pipeline of business because it is still there to be had. I got started really well with what we call pay-per-click internet buyer leads. That's what I started converting when I was on the team. As we transitioned our model and I started working with sellers as well, my number one sources now are expireds. I have learned a lot how to speak with them. I now know their mindset, their psychology. So I'm able to use that when I'm talking with them and uh, trying to connect with them and get the appointment. Uh, and then of course we don't have to touch on like any of the referrals and stuff like that. We yeah. keep it with the prospecting and the cold leads, but, um, there's another lead source. I'm going to remain nameless right now, but it's, it's not an exclusive lead source. And once again, what I have learned is there are other people on our team who are more nurturing. So those people do really well with our Facebook ads. Those people do really well with for sale by owners. Yeah. That's not me. I'm more aggressive, assertive, get to the point. Like I don't want to date you. So that that's really a good 
good tip for people when they're, cause I'm sure that, you know, once you get past like how you do it, like, okay, who do I call? Right. right? And so for you, you're like, okay, I'm dominating expireds because I'm aggressive. I can yep. get around those objections. But for somebody that's watching, could be really good at first all my owners. Yes. Or be I really good at- I have not been ordered a physio in, in my leads. life. And I, leads, yeah. I, I'm probably a little bit at this point telling myself that I can't do it. You know what I mean? But I do need the people I bet, who I are- if, if I, you know, was like, hey, I, I I, if I competed against you, you'd figure it out, but yeah. Oh, sure. If it's competition, of course I will. But I would rather, once again, I, I had this whole aha moment last year when I broke it down for Nick and I said, this is why me and these other people on our teams do this so well. And this is why these people convert this. And he was like, it was that moment where right. we're like, yes, it's just different personality styles. Absolutely. And we're all still doing it on the phone. Client, though. It's also a different type of client because yes. the inspired, they're they angry, have they're level. direct, they're assertive. Right. And they, but they also already yeah, have sure. a level of interest, right? Because they, they raise their hand. Sell, yeah. But what's the biggest thing? Overcoming the objection. And for you, with your personality, it's easy for you because right. you're like all day, every day. Let's let's go back and forth. So for someone else that might not be that aggressive and might be more nurturing, for and they're them, like, oh, sorry to bother you, right? And they're gonna be like, okay, they're <laughs> eat you alive. You know? Yeah. So let's kind of touch on scripts a little bit. I think that is important. What I want to say is we and I only use scripts to guide me in case the conversation gets off so much. So there are in the beginning, did, did he, what, where was the team like, here, this is what you no, said? Okay. No, there were no, so just had to guess. I don't think so. There were no scripts given. I had, I was at Keller Williams at the time and there's that program and they teach ignite and they teach scripts. And I remember thinking these scripts are so awful and I'm so embarrassed. And it is better to just sound like a robot than to sound like an idiot. So I'm gonna give them that. Yeah. Um, but, but you know what though? You're so right because I've seen on the Facebook groups where agents will post their conversations, even investors will post their conversations and they'll say things like, hi, I'm, call I'm calling about 123 Main and I would like to sell your home and blah, blah, blah. Like, so what? That's is just as bad as adding someone on Facebook and then them being like, go like my Oh, page. I hate that. Ugh, <laughs> I hate that. Let me give you my top, my top points for scripts. First yeah. of all, I kept it simple again because I didn't have yeah. scripts provided to me. Should be and the theme. Keeping it keeping simple. It simple. Yeah. I remember thinking, I'm human, you're a human, let's have a conversation. And as simple as that, it really like, is because, because we try to be so formal with, hi, how are you? How's your day? They don't care. You don't care. It's the fakest intro you can give anyone. Right. You don't know them. By the way, if you say, hi, how are you? Which no one cares about. And then they say, my day's fucking shit. Well, yeah. how do you recover from that? That's really I, hard. I love that. I, I love that because we're so alike in that aspect because I didn't know anything either. And so for me, when I was calling, you know, I wasn't on a team. I was doing it myself. So there was nobody that would call pre foreclosures or whatever. And right. I, was, I said the same thing. I'm like, I'm just gonna talk to them. Yeah, like, and you're human. It's really that, like, it's such a simple concept fundamentally that people forget that when you guys are cold calling, they're human beings. Yes. So they Treat wanna be humans. able to connect and in order to stand out from the thousand other people that they interact with, because their cousin's a realtor and if it's expired, they're on a list of a hundred other realtors. The only way is that for you to stick out is that you build that rapport and that relationship where they're like, oh, Elizabeth. Yes. I remember Elizabeth. This other person was just this annoying realtor, but this is Elizabeth. When I was trying to train my agents of how I convert, because we could have the same phone call and I'm like, hey, yeah. how am I like getting off the phone with this client, but you just called twice, you know what I mean? And I couldn't explain it until I started recording and documenting my conversations when I was in my trainings. And I realized like, okay, a lot of it had to do with the fact that it was just who I was. Like, I can be your best friend. I can be your grand, your granddaughter. I can be, be your, your, therapist. your therapist, your wife, like whatever you who need. Who do I hate together? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, who do you need who me you to be? Who are you voting for? Me too. Yes. <laughs> and I was able to adapt just by being intuitive of like, you know, like you said, reading the room, understanding like, can I be this way with this person? Right. But adapting to them instead of them expecting to adapt to me. Right, because most people think like this is the way I am. Right. No, you're trying to bring that comfort level to where they feel comfortable and want to work with you. Yes. You have to adapt to them. They're the client, and so I think that's really important because that really is a huge factor in building rapport. Well, it is because if we clients. only work with people who are like ourselves or who are easy for us to yeah. work with, we are all missing out on a ton of business. Hundred percent. That, and you know what, people who aren't like me, like so, for instance. I love numbers, I love analytics, but I don't always need insane analytical data in order yeah. for me to make a decision. Um, and so if someone else is like that, 
and needs that sort of numbers and the data yeah. and the stats and the over explanation, the things that we know maybe are not crucial at all to getting the job done, but right. they need it in order to feel good about hiring you. Right. And that could, I can leave that appointment drained and I can maybe not have a conversation for the rest of the night, but I still do it because right. we can't just work with people like us. Yeah. I think for me it changed because a lot of times, um, this was like, I went through a program and, and they went, they did personalities by color coding. Right. Yeah. And so they do that a lot with, you can go through a lot of different programs, but what the light bulb for me was not understanding who I was. Cause I know who I am, right? Yes. You have to understand how you work and operate and how you think and communicate. Right. But the important thing was when we broke down, like, okay, like for example, if you were a green, you were an analytic person. Like, so I know that I'm not going to be emotional in my responses to you. Right. And so when we broke it down that way, it was like this light bulb moment for me, like, okay, I'm picking up on certain, the way you're talking and communicating to me. So I know automatically my response. Yes. 100%. I know how you want me to talk to you instead of me communicating the way I think is effective. That can be another kind of pro tip that I wasn't going to tell you is have it. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to, well, no. I was going to say, have it. I remember a lender doing this actually. He has one way that he answers the phone and that their response tells him exactly their style. So if they're oh, like, uh, yeah, this is them. What's the point? Okay. So you're a high D. Oh my gosh, my day's so fantastic. It's so pretty outside. Maybe you're a high I. Yeah. Uh, and like, so he's got this way of understanding this is your personality style. So now I know exactly how I need to manage this conversation with you. So definitely a tip for if you guys are not already picking this up, that if you guys are going to be prospecting on a high level as an agent, make sure that you understand how to effectively communicate with other people. Like take, take those personality, you know, courses or, or if you don't understand or really having those conversations, because the more you do it, the more you're going to see, and you're going to realize like how much easier it is yes. to get them every time. So, you know what, let me break this down. Let me give you a few of the easy pro tips to get started with. And then the ways that you can go learn and elevate. So the first one, human to human, you're human, they're human. Be simple with that. This is a great one of have a set opener, kind of in a way. This may be better. This could be tough, but you can try it. Have a set opener if you aren't great at reading a person to so kind of gauge what type of personality they are and how you need to kind handle like the conversation. Wonder. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you've got those two. When it comes to scripts, I think so many people get in their own head of like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. And the point is like, you, you don't have to have everything set. If they're sitting on the phone with you and they haven't hung up, Keep talking to them. My Let easiest, them talk. My, a lot of times yes. they'll talk to Whoever them. talks first, like a lot of the times, or whoever talks more, yeah. they, first of all, they're going to think that the conversation went the best. Right. And if that's you who feels that way, then that means you probably did a shitty job and they don't have the same rapport and you're feeling great because you talked the whole time. Right. So, but the other thing is, is keep the conversation going. And our little trick there is become a five-year-old. So everything they tell you, it's kind of like, why, why, why? The adult way to respond to that is tell me more. <laughs> so I love that. So those are some of the. Did you tell Emma that my daughter? <laughs> I love her. Um, but that's one of the best things is tell me more about that. Yeah. If someone says, if you call them, and they're like, I can't talk right now. I'm really busy. A lot of the things we'll do to keep them on the phone. Oh my gosh, I'm really busy too. Real quick. <laughs> um, okay, I've got. A, I'm setting into a meeting myself. I've got another call coming in, but real quick, one last question. One last question. Do you know how long I can stay on the phone saying one last question or real quick? Yeah. A lot. Once again, if they're not hanging up on me, then they're still into this conversation. No one wants the salesman until they actually need them. Right. Um, and then at that point, if, if someone else is more aggressive or assertive, then you're going to miss out and they're going to get the business. So, and ultimately no one wants to feel sold. So no. yes, that's her objective, but she's making, she's honestly not really giving them a way out. Like tell me more or yes, one second, really quick. So my and other, they feel obligated to be like, oh, yeah. Most people feel bad. They're like, oh, and okay. most people won't hang up on you, and yeah. unless they're complete assholes, but you know, whatever. Right. My other little trick there is um, when it comes to starting the conversation. So, for instance, because I call a lot of expireds, these leads, these homeowners are getting fifty plus calls a day for the first few days. Um, I don't want to sound like every other agent, and I know what yeah. every other agent says, which is. Hi, are you aware that your home on 123 Main Street has come off the market and sold? When do you plan on hiring the best agent for the job? I guarantee you, and you're probably going to laugh because you've probably said that at some point. Yeah. That's what's taught. It's right. so, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's dumb because it's better than just being like shocked that they picked up the phone. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to do a, a pattern disruption there. So right. um, maybe it's, if they pick up. 
hi, I saw that your home came off the market and sold. Have you given up forever on selling your home? Or sometimes one of the ones that I'll say on that is, and I have these up my sleeve, but I created that over time because I realized maybe I was selling like the other agents. And I, your opener is so crucial to them staying on the phone with you. It sets the tone too for the whole conversation. This is why I stopped using a dialer, by the way. We kind of referenced yeah. that earlier because yes, I could get more calls in, but there's always a little bit of a delay from when they pick up the phone to when it connects you. And I feel like they can tell that. And so then it's like you lose them. So I noticed a higher pickup rate and a higher uh, conversation rate when I went back to hand dialing. Oh, wow. So I'm not going to say- not doing, Are you still doing 1500 2000 No, I'm not. But it's because so much of my business now is, 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 is referral. referral sphere. So I still do prospect every single day, um, but I no longer do that level of calls. But now my lead generation looks more like social media efforts, sometimes yeah. content, and I'm looking at agent to agent referrals and stuff like that. So, um, but that pattern disruptor, if you can be the person who doesn't sound like the 10 other calls they just got, you have a way better chance of staying on the phone with them. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is the first thing that you say, you're setting the tone for the entire conversation and you're disrupting the pattern by not saying like the I want you script. to, if you can yourself say, hi, like, how are you? I yeah. want you to, and it's still comes out of my mouth because it's a right. pleasantry, but yeah. you better believe if you see me dialing and I say it immediately, I'm like, like oh. I will catch myself and I'll keep going. That's the other thing. Don't get you tripped up because you don't know, because they, you may know what you quote unquote have to ask, need to ask to figure out if this is a, a valid opportunity. Right. They don't know if you messed up, if you didn't say everything you needed to say. So right. just go with it. And yeah. you're going to have to fail your way forward. You are. But to elevate that, if you want to take all of these quote unquote more simple steps, then you can learn some scripts and you can find them all online, all on YouTube. Um, and these scripts are great. Now that I say this, I need to send those to you that you asked for <laughs> days ago. Um, these scripts are great because they're more of a guideline to keep it simple before you have scripts. What's the point of your conversation? Is it to set the appointment? Make Is it to script. get the follow up day or yeah. the follow up? If there, if you can't get the appointment set, awesome. Then you know you need to say whatever you need to to reach that end goal. Then you can work on actually adding scripts. Um, and you're gonna learn what you need to say from just failing forward through this. But then you can go and learn like NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming, mm -hmm. how to speak to people. Cause you did mention how to communicate effectively. And that's what made me think ways to elevate it. Tonality is everything. NLP is everything because body language is actually the number one way that we communicate. Mm -hmm. And that's completely removed if you're prospecting over the phone. So now you have to be so good with your words. Um, and you, you don't actually have to be that good. If you also, if you suck, you can still do this because if you make enough contacts, it's just a numbers game. It's a contact sport. Eventually you will have success and then you can skill up. So you don't, don't mean to like scare you by saying you have to be so good, but go practice your tonality. You'll see that I do upswings. I do downswings. We do what we call embedded commands. I will say that our last brokerage taught this really well, but I also learned a lot from the Wolf on Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. He's got a yeah. whole theory on straight line persuasion. It's like a 10 hour class that he taught. It's really good. Did you take it? Oh, I've got it on, I've got the videos. I didn't take it in person. I know that's what I meant. Oh, but you took the, yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I think the biggest thing is you hit the nail on the head that most people focus on the actual scripts instead of how to effectively communicate them. Yeah. And that's probably the biggest misconception in our industry as real estate agents where they're like, okay guys, does anyone have any good scripts? Instead yes. of, hey guys, as if that's the magic pill. Right. Like, yeah. I can give you guys the perfect words. Elizabeth can tell you exactly what she says. Like she'll give it all to you. And yet you guys won't have the same results. Right. Because she is telling you guys, it's more important to effectively communicate, to learn how to read people. Like you said, your tone on the phone, what you're coming across to keep going, even if you feel like you messed up is more important than actually the words that are coming out of your mouth and being perfect, the script or whatever. I mean, if you feel like for me, when I would first cold call, like I would write down bullet points because oh, yeah. I got nervous and that's, that's essentially a script is I would write down bullet points of, okay, I got to remember to ask these questions yeah. or hit these points. Or this is what I need so that I can feel confident that like you're qualified, that I even want to spend my time because to. I know that in the beginning I didn't have the confidence you know, or the, I felt like I wasn't the expert. So I was like just diving in right. like most people, most agents do, 
where you're like, you freeze up. Like, what's my name? Or like you said, you, they answered shit. Like, yeah. Oh, that's the biggest thing. When I was training new agents on our team, they wouldn't be prepared for them to actually answer and then speak. It's like all the hype. And yeah. Like, oh shit. Oh my God, they actually picked up. Yeah. But I, I can't stress that enough. I remember the first like two months I was on the team. I'm, I told you guys, I would come in the office every single day and eventually the other agents would come in yeah. and I learned that for that two to three hours, they would be in the office. I would like almost choose to text leads, nothing. I don't care what technology, you still make the phone call, make the phone call, follow up with a text, follow up with a video message, follow up with an email, make the freaking phone call. And I can, in a second, just wrap up with some quick strategies on how to effectively actually get them to pick up the phone. But I remember and so many agents get in their head about other people listening to them, hearing them. You just have to get over that. So I think I had two weeks where when those people came in, I was not making calls because I was so scared that I was so new. I was going to sound awful. They were going to be judging me. They were going to be like telling Nick, like how bad I was. Like, you know, I didn't know how any of this worked at the time. Yeah. So I almost didn't make phone calls. And then after two weeks, I was like, I have to get over this because otherwise there's two, three hours of my day where I'm kind of just sitting there twiddling my thumbs, right. trying to look busy, not actually being busy. And you know what? I'm not going to get business that way. So that forced me to get over it. Yeah. If you feel intimidated by this, what I want to say is just get started making the calls, whether you suck, whether you know what to say, just do make, it. Just make, and, yeah. and then after you have at least four hours of like lead generation today, or at least something consistent, two, three, four, whatever that is for you and your business, have the rest of the time be skilling up. So you need to be skilling up while you're just eating shit and sucking and failing forward, yeah. honestly. Uh, Cause don't, don't get that per analysis paralysis where it's like, it's gotta be perfect first. Right. When it comes with cold business and prospecting over the phone, you've gotta be aggressive, you've gotta be quick. So if you have a lead that comes in, you do not let that sit for an hour before you call. There's a so reason important. all of these companies like I'm going to say, I'm going to say one like op city for a reason that you can buy leads from them and you pay huge referral fee for those leads. Sometimes they'll even go prospect in your own database and then you've already paid for that lead and then you pay them a referral fee. They exist because you as an agent aren't picking up the phone quick enough and consumers want something Instant. like this. So you need to be picking up that phone and returning that phone call within five minutes or less, ideally 90 seconds or less. If you are prospecting and they don't pick up, my other tip is be aggressive. I will always rather lose business for being too aggressive than not aggressive enough. So especially when it's cold leads. Yes, you have to be. Because also who picks up unknown numbers easily? So we will call back to back to back three times in a row. Obviously, if you pick up the first time, I'm not just harassing you after that, but I'm gonna do back to back to back, and then I'm going to send you a text. Probably going to send you a video message. Yeah. That video message is a great little tactic, by the way, because it's like, hey, I'm a real person. I'm not a robot. Right. And that You're gets a lot of responses. Yeah. Absolutely. So those are some of my top tips. Do it and, to, and, like, and just get better along the way. Don't let that stop you. Respond quickly. You definitely need to have this time blocked daily. And I would let it be one of the first things that you do. Um, and then you can do it still later throughout the day if you don't have appointments. But at yeah. least you get it in. And that way you get used to keeping that time and managing it as you manage clients and business as that starts to come so that you never have a dry pipeline or a month without closings. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to do it. You've got to do it consistently. And when it's cold business like that, you've got to be aggressive. Cause even if your business, you're told that you're the only one in the zip code who you're the only agent getting these leads, no consumer is just looking on one site. So even right. if it's an exclusive lead source, they're all over everywhere. We also have family members that are agents and yes. friends and somebody at work or whatever. So you definitely have to be on top of it. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you guys got some value out of this. Elizabeth, um, if people are watching this and they want to connect with you, what's the best way to connect with you? Um, on Instagram, you can find me at the Elizabeth Austin on Facebook. I think it's just Elizabeth Austin. Um, and then my contact will drop it in the comments or put it on the screen or something here. We'll give you my cell phone and my email. Okay. Awesome. Thank you again. And thanks for having me. Um, don't forget the only short sale group worth being a part of on Facebook. Um, and we'll see you guys next time.